Behold, Troy to the Max Extreme and Ghost Hunter Dave, together, Imperious Rex. On a sunny spring day within the confines of Dave's basement, they gather to discuss The Vision, the 2016 12-issue Marvel Comics miniseries written by Tom King with artwork provided by Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Since its inception in January of 2016, neither King and Walta nor our hosts could have anticipated the emotion the tale would generate, nor the sense of loss that would remain in its wake. Behold, the vision. Yes, Troy. Take two. Yes, we uh, <laughs> we did do a vision episode a while back. Uh huh. Didn't work out. No. Too drunk. <laughs> Too drunk. Cutting room floor. Yes. And then garbage. And then you threw the cameras away. I did. <laughs> so we've rebought everything. The set's new. Everything's yeah. new. Right. Rebought the books. <laughs> yeah. So that's. I mean, that's the only way you really can do it. It's the only way you can be certain. Right. But uh, Tom King. Uh, in his Marvel stint, mm -hmm. did uh, an exquisite job of bringing, I would say, like a B-list character, the Vision. A character nobody cared about. R right. Right. <laughs> like, maybe some minor fans, like, I don't, if the Vision is your favorite character, let us know. But, really? <laughs> there we go. Who's gonna say? Who's gonna That's own why up I'm waiting. <laughs> Let us know so yeah. we can call you out on the internet. But yeah. uh, they give justice to this B, maybe C level character that's mm -hmm. always been around in the Avengers. Yep. And really gave a twist on the character, a heartfelt, semi depressing. Uh, Tom, Se if you're putting it mildly, <laughs> if you're familiar with Tom King, it's right up his alley. <laughs> yeah, of a kind yeah. of a story that he's telling for this uh, synthesoid yeah. vision. Yeah. yeah, master of the nine panel grid, Tom King. Right, right. He uses it frequently. Right. In this and other projects. Right. Like he's definitely a an old school uh, plotter. Right. And uh, I mean, hearing him talk like. On uh, like different podcasts and stuff, I've heard interviews with him. Mm -hmm. Like he, I don't know how he does it, but he seems to separate himself from his work. Yeah, because like the guy that would you're listening to on this podcast is fun, and he's like, <laughs> I want to do these fun projects, and this is so great, and whatever. I just gotta he, get through vision. <laughs> and then he writes like really deep and most of the time dour character introspective. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and. It, but it, not to its fault at all, because mm -hmm. I really dig what he did here in Vision. Also, what he's doing in Mr. Miracle. Yeah. And I only have read a little bit of his Batman run. I'm waiting for, like, a chunk of it to be collected, and I'm going to plow through it. So, it it follows, like, the least identifiable Marvel character. <laughs> and makes him, like, almost, like, horrifyingly human. Oh, yeah. More human than human. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I could. It, you can. <laughs> Rob Zombie doesn't have that trademark, <laughs> nor does Blade Runner. <laughs> so it, it's Vision's kind of his quest to achieve like a normal life mm -hmm. as like a working family man with a house in the suburbs mm -hmm. and uh, an android wife, child, and uh, eventually Other a dog. dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two children and then a dog, yep. a reanimated dog. Right. So it's it's examining that <laughs> kind of like what makes. A human, human. Yep. And can a non-human ever hope to achieve that? Right. And if they can, like, for what? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. why? The I love the opening scene to this book where the two neighbors come to go visit the Vision family. Mm hmm And the guy is like, I'm gonna say racist. It's not really. Ra it's <laughs> racist to robots, <laughs> right? Because he's like, why would you bring these people cookies? Because they're essentially just a toaster. Yeah. And I was like, that just sets up the entire book very well. Uh huh. And I, uh, that guy doesn't. 
end well. No. <laughs> <laughs> I no. mean, he is a racist, kind of, so he gets what's coming He's to him. He's an android racist. <laughs> what a creep. Yeah. So Vision, at his core, is a robot that has to act logically. Yeah. In the book, throughout the book, he is constantly put in these situations where he has to do, like, quote-unquote, illogical things. Right. Because they're normal. Yeah, and right. he has like this immense desire to just fit in and yes. be normal, right? For some reason, and, like and pushes that onto his family as yeah, well. Yeah, like a conversation with him and his wife in the kitchen, saying like when they meet that those first guests, for instance, mm -hmm. it's like they were kind. No, say they were nice they were because nice. it has a different connotation. <laughs> yeah, it has dual meaning <laughs> where they could be nice or maybe they're not nice. Right, <laughs> and his wife says like, well, then the phrase is meaningless. Right. And Vision says, like, well, obviously, to assert truth, that which has no meaning is the core mission of humanity. Yeah. So he doesn't even, like, he doesn't think kindly of humanity. Right. Like, he sees their faults. <clears throat> or he gets it well enough. He's like, I get it. Just do it this way, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're doing, but just do I'm, it this way. I'm really trying to fit in here. Uh -huh. And if you could just do me a kindness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. I, I really like what you're doing, but a little more like this. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But like the, a lot of the whole book is, is kind of written like that, where mm -hmm. they, they have very matter-of-fact ways of speaking to each other, the Vision family especially. Yeah. Where it's just like... All logical programming, like think thinking, uh -huh. and it goes against the grain of like really kind of what humanity is. At the same time, they're trying to be human and overcoming all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, really heady type. Yeah, because as humans, we know the wrong, the right and wrong choice. Right. But more often than not, people make the wrong choice because sure. they're like led by desire and emotion. Right. But Vision and his family are devoid of emotion, <laughs> but still understand that like, humans do this, though. So yeah. we should do that. Yeah. You know? right. Like, we should intentionally right. make the wrong choice because that's what they do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more often than not. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. Very interesting. And you would never think, like, a book where the four main characters are robots and speak in very robotic uh -huh. uh, talk and have robotic mannerisms would yeah. be you'd be able to As identify right, with, yeah, right. but you totally are. It's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, exactly. The visions are very much like this facsimile for, you know, an adult who feels like they have to fit in and mm. get a job and have yep. a wife and kids and yep. live in the suburbs because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? right. <sighs> While also saving the world 37 times, <laughs> as he says many times. Yes, yeah. And I like that at one point he goes through all of them. Yeah. Ultron again. <laughs> Thanos. Ultron uh, again. Ultron again. <laughs> Ultron again. <laughs> yeah. You know. So essentially Vision is an, an android created by Ultron yeah. to destroy the Avengers. Right. And he went against his programming right. and became a member of the Avengers. Yeah. Valued member. 37 time world saver. <laughs> <laughs> and he just... Uh, got an itch, I guess, to create a family. Right. Like, I, that all happens prior to this. I don't even know if it happens in a book or if no. this is the first instance of it. Right. But it, he just has a family. Yeah. The only reason I could see him trying to go about it is historically and famously, he has a relationship with the Scarlet Witch, which plays yeah. heavily in this book at many points. Yeah. Um, and... I assume that because of that kind of failed relationship, he tries to build something that is controllable and not dealt on chaos magic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wants to get into something more normalized and maybe something under, I don't know, under his control maybe isn't mm -hmm. the right phrase to use, but... Something he can, like, figure no, out. But normal. Like, yeah. <laughs> suburb, 2.5 children. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. All that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's another amazing moment in it where he's um, in bed with the Scarlet Witch in mm -hmm. a flashback. Mm -hmm. And he tells her this joke that Wasp told him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, I think it's like one toaster said to the other toaster, blah, blah, blah. And the second toaster said like, you can talk? <laughs> and Classic. Yeah, classic toaster <laughs> jokes. 
and like they start to chuckle and then they both burst out laughing because mm-hmm. it's so ridiculous that an yeah. android is telling this joke right and like he had this connection to scarlet witch then uh-huh. and then they go through this turmoil and she leaves him and then he creates virginia mm-hmm. and he tells her the joke and they both just like sit in bed motionless <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is where i'm at now this is <laughs> joke accepted Yes. <laughs> Initiating laughter protocol. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. So what kind of kickstarts the story is while Vision is off at work. Avengering. Yeah. <laughs> their house is under attack by the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Who's the brother of Simon Williams. Right. Who is the... Like, it's a it's a whole thing. Yeah, the, <laughs> the model of Vision, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the... The brain patterns that Ultron used to create the vision. Okay. Like, his whole thing is just as complicated as anything else. Yeah, and they don't go too deep into no, it. No, Just that Grim Reaper, like, has a beef with them. Right. <laughs> and he's calling them, like, non-people and all that. Yeah, yeah. So he's attacking and uh, injures the kids, mm-hmm. and the wife acts out and kills him. Yes. Kills the Grim Reaper, right. even though that's against her programming to right. kill. yeah. And she covers it up by burying him in the backyard Mm -hmm. and by... lying to her husband. Yeah, yep, Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, someone catches her in the act. Someone Mm -hmm. records her covering up the evidence. Yep. And then he's trying to kind of blackmail her. Right. To get her and her family just to get out of there. Right. Because the whole neighborhood has like this android phobia where they're like, Yeah, You're not normal, you know, you ain't human, get out of here. Yeah. That relationship between that... I'll just say neighbor, mm-hmm. and the visions is multi-layered because that neighbor has a son who is in school with in school their son. with Viv, the yeah. the daughter. Yeah, which they have like I'm not gonna say like a romantic relationship, but a a, a friendly semi-romantic kind of things blossoming. Is right? romantic as an android <laughs> and a human can, <laughs> right. can right. start off. And I really like that when that happens when she. Uh, has a conversation with that boy that Tom King narr- like I, I say like he narrates a book <laughs> that it says like she replays this over and over in her mind because yeah. it's the happiest moment of her life or whatever like mm-hmm. that and I that is sprinkled throughout this book that yeah. I really enjoy yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I love the detached like omniscient narrator of this uh-huh. it reminds me of um, God uh, there's a movie called Little Children. Mm. Very good movie, but it has like this sweeping narrator voice and they're never identified. It's just like the voice of God. Sure. And that's like what this is. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's other movies like that too, where yeah. it's just like this unnamed narrator is telling mm. the story. Sure. And they're very much like a part of it, but right. you just don't know who they are. Right. It could be the watcher. Right. I guess. Some would also say March of the Penguins. Some would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not me. Of no. Course. Oh God. <laughs> I would never. No. I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah she gets into some trouble with that because mm-hmm. the father wants them out of there right and then things uh they get into an altercation uh-huh. he shoots at her she's like vision the bullets can go through <laughs> right and he ends up hitting and killing his son right and then she like knocks him out and right. puts him into a coma yeah and now there's trouble <laughs> it's like you can't cover this yeah. up anymore right capital t that rhymes with p and that stands for pool dave What's that? The Music Man. Okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I get it. The kids think they can play the instruments, and uh-huh. then they do. It's a happy ending. I love it. No one else has a happy ending? Not this. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're in a bad spot right now. Yes. And this book has just an overwhelming sense of, like, mounting tension. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the narrator it? is responsible for a lot of this. Yes. Because it's got this... He has this, uh, the way he explains it is like, these people are coming to their house. They will be dead in a month. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, what? (laughs) I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. It's this all seeing where like, this is not going to end well. Right. Because someone's telling us that. (laughs) Yes. So that's going on. And the wife is just like at her wits end here. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. she's essentially a new being right and she's like no i should behave this way and vision's like no do it this way right. you know <laughs> right and it, while he's like this absent father like burying himself in his work right and and i just i just put that together like just now that like she is really the only being in this book 
that really has nothing to do but like just sit in her own dread. Yeah, she's like the <laughs> like stay-at-home mom, the stay-at-home mom yeah. and housewife. She doesn't go to school. She doesn't go have a job. She just sits there and is sad. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Oh man, you just you see her like unraveling right. throughout the book. Yeah, Virginia, I think her name. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's mounting, mm -hmm. and it's just like this anxiety and dread that yep. is just overpowering her. And the kids are run into issues at school, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're visited by Vision's brother, right, Victor, mm -hmm. who is a member of the Runaways, mm -hmm. uh, earlier series that Brian Vaughn, Brian mm -hmm. K. Vaughn mm -hmm. did, and he is another android created by Ultron, mm -hmm. and he comes to just check in on him and hang out, right, because he's he's gone against his <clears throat> programming too, right. But as the narrator tells us, he will eventually go on to, like, end the world, to destroy the Avengers. Right. He's like a sleeper agent or uh -huh. something. So he's hanging out, and he's also reporting back to the Avengers, because the Avengers are just like, what is up with Vision? Yeah. <laughs> Why did he create a family what? in the suburbs? What is he doing? What is his end game here? <laughs> so he's, like, reporting back to them, and Vision's son walks in on him, mm -hmm. and... Victor, like, tries to stop him, but mm -hmm. ends up, like, frying his circuits mm -hmm. and killing him. So, Victor is arrested, and Vision is put under house arrest because they're worried he's going to retaliate. Right. And Vision is just in this mindset of, like, a parent would get revenge for their child, <laughs> so I'm going to go and do that. <laughs> like, it's illogical, but that's what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes out, and the Avengers are there, like, outside the jail waiting for him. Right. And he just cuts through right. them yeah. like <laughs> well, a hot like... knife through butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, I really like that point in the story, though, because, like, it, even though Vision is, like, this kind of secondary character, it really puts him up in the upper echelon, like, yeah, he's there, but he's this powerhouse that is just sitting there waiting to oh, yeah. cut through you at any moment in time. Yeah, it's like any time we've seen Vision in action, he's using like the bare minimum of his power just because <laughs> right. that's what's necessary. Right. But like you crank him up right. and he could just he could just unload on right. everybody. Right. He could kill everyone oh, at yeah. any point in time yeah. by just grabbing his foot and dragging him to the core of the earth yeah. and just letting you fry. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, he just, he wipes out the Avengers. Right. And doesn't kill any of them. He just right. incapacitates them. Right. And then he goes and he's <laughs> about to confront and kill Victor. Mm -hmm. in, you know, for vengeance of his son. If only V for Vendetta was here, because oh. there'd be so many Vs going <laughs> oh, <God>. on. <laughs> so before he can do it, boom, spoilers, Virginia comes in, <laughs> right. tears Victor's robotic heart out, yep. and is like, I'm doing this so you don't have to, husband. Right. Because, like, you've always been logical, and if you do this, they're never going to be able to see you straight again right you know right. they're gonna yeah. always be worried about you you'll have this taint stigma. on you yeah. yes it's big stigma messy better taint. than taint <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah right <laughs> so she kills victor and then goes back to the house yep and he's like what <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> but the the takeaway is that vision was going to do it mm -hmm. so he's already like well past his programming yeah he's on a new level Oh, hell yeah. He yeah. Is. Yeah. <clears throat> and then he gets back to the house, and his wife is kind of waiting for him, and she kind of tells, you know, everything that's happened, how mm -hmm. she's been responsible for killing the, you know, the, the school, inadvertently killing the school right. kid and all that. All <laughs> right, that. Right, right, right. And she has taken, like, a poison, and she's going to die, too. Yeah, the vase, uh, uh what is it, like, the vase of fucking wonder gore or something like that it's, uh it's the flying water vase of zen La. <laughs> oh right yeah some a silver from the silver touch. surfer yeah, yep. yeah and this is one of my favorite things in the book is it's this floating water vase mm -hmm. that you can't put it's beautiful right but you can't put flowers in it because the water will kill them <laughs> right and there's a, a i think a narrator moment in there where he says uh the mystery is not why they are empty the vase. Mm, right. But why anyone would make such a vase. Right. <laughs> and that is like the best description of the book as yeah, a whole. Yeah, right. Because like, 
Vision has created these beautiful androids that can do anything, and he just wants them to be normal. Right. And it's like, they can't be. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, something like this, <laughs> right. they can do anything, can't just be normal. And by doing so, you make them dangerous. When, when I read that line in the book, I was just like, well done, Tom. King. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the second read-through of this, when I got to that line, I wish I would have just, like, read it shut it and nodded it <laughs> and be like, wrote, wrote Tom King a handwritten letter just saying, good on you. Nice work. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's kind of how it wraps up. Mm -hmm. We spoiled the hell out of this one, but it's been out for a while. It's, it's been like yeah. a deluxe hardcover now. Yeah. So get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his wife kind of takes the fall for it. And then Vision kind of picks up the pieces with his remaining daughter, mm -hmm. Viv, mm -hmm. who I believe is still in... I think she's in the Champions or something yeah. like that now. Yep. And they're like, they're just going to go forward as like a single parent. Right. You know? <laughs> right. And wow, what a what a weird, depressing, emotional right. roller coaster ride. <laughs> the Vision of all characters. Of all characters. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's hard to say like anything... A nitpick at the story because like it's great mm -hmm. like it's so much easier to take like a crappy story and just like pick parts like away from it and be like this is dumb this is dumb but like vision is solid all the way through yeah and just to keep iterating like it's good and it's a one and done you know yeah, it's not that's one it. of those that's like, like, vision obviously is you know he's been around before and he'll be around after but this mm -hmm. is like the definitive vision story right. that is unlike any pre-existing vision story. You don't right. need to know anything about him. Right. They call back a very like specific flashbacks, but it doesn't matter. No, you know, no. <laughs> you know, like he saved the world from all these people. Right. And I'm sure those were real instances that he's right. calling back to, but like you don't need to read them. Right. You know, if you wanted anything, read the wiki on it. Because it's like his character origin is a bit convoluted and it like mm -hmm. twists and turns and like retcons itself and all that stuff. But like just yeah. go to like a Marvel wiki or whatever. Got his family tree on the back <laughs> of you know, all the people right. associated with him and it's kinda interesting. Yeah. That damn dog. <laughs> it's like a Frank and Weenie type it situation. Is. It totally is. <laughs> but anyway, that's Vision by Tom King. Uh, if you've read it, let us know down below uh, what you thought of the story, and we can start a chat down there. Uh, but until next time, where we go over a big one, <laughs> a big one, years in the making, <laughs> ten years for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're going over Jim Starlin's Infinity Gauntlet. Oh man! For our next episode, so read up. Get prepped for Infinity War, uh, and we'll be back next week. But until, or not next week, but next show, rather. Could be next week. Sure. We'll, see how much we'll drop them whenever we want. <laughs> but uh, until next time, I've been Tour of the Magic Street. And I've been Ghost Hunter Dave. Together we've been Imperious Rex, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>